Welcome back to the Introduction to Materials. In the last video, Jason suggested that we take the crevices in between our rocks and make them glow. Well, this seemed like a good idea. I mean, we've been showing them how to put together a very simple rock-like material, but you did start talking about things like masks and how we could use masks to control what parts of a material would receive an effect and which parts would not. So I just thought it would be kind of Cool. That's right, because the last time I tried anything with uh, emission, I just made everything glow. And that yes, you did. And yeah, that wasn't really all that You cool. made a light bulb. <laughs> That's right. So let's start off by jumping into our material. We'll begin by opening the generic browser, and I'll double-click on the Matt Zach Rocks material. And uh, we see the network that we have created so far. Now, I'm going to give us a little more screen space here and there. We'll make our, uh, our little preview window a little bit uh, smaller. We'll go ahead and squeeze down our properties window just a little bit. And I can push this back just a tad, too. So I'm just try trying to stretch things out and give us just sure. a little more room so you can see what's going on. In the end, what we want to do is come up with some interesting network that singles out the crevices in between our rocks, applies to them some interesting color. And, and then, then well, drives... Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, before we drive it in, we want to be able to multiply that color to have not only a glow color, but a glow intensity value. Ah, so a control. Yeah, some sort of control to control how bright the glow is. And then we're going to plug that whole thing into emissive. Sounds good. So for starters, uh, you know, when you're trying to tackle... Uh, anything like this, it's a good idea to start simply. What we need is some way to single out those crevices and nothing else. And that's actually pretty easy. If we take a look at our texture here, you will notice that uh, it is currently, well, it's already, it's got like some sort of color for the rocks, and it has a very dark color, nearly black, for all of the crevice areas. Mm -hmm. We can begin there. Also remember that our red channel is a, almost, uh, almost exactly a black and white version of what we have here. So let's take a look at that. What I'm going to do is uh, take the red channel and let's bring it in some way where we can see it. If we just wanted to look at the red channel and nothing else, what could we do? Now, this is not something that we're going to use in our network. It's just a trick that I use a lot when I'm working on a material and I kind of need to do a diagnostic, and that is to create a multiply node. So I'll hold down M and left click, and then I'll bring in a constant. So I'll hold down 1 and left click, and I'm going to take my constant and set it to a value of 1. We'll plug that into either one, it doesn't really matter. And then we'll take our red channel and plug it into value B. And then you can use this color swatch as an idea for, for what you're about to come up with. So this is what our red channel currently looks like. Again, you'll notice it's got some lighter areas for our rock. It's got some darker areas for the, uh, the crevices, which is exactly wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's perfectly wrong. We want lighter areas for our crevices and dark, nearing black areas for our rocks to single those out. How do we do that? Well, what I'm going to do is bring in a new node that you haven't seen yet called the one minus material expression. And you can create this either by dragging it out of your material expression list, or you can also hold down the O key and left click, and that'll create it as well. Now I'm going to move my little di diagnostic network out of the way. Where I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to disconnect it and just kind of leave it floating for a little while. And then if at any point along the path I need to test anything out, I can just plug something into it and have a look at what I get. So let's take our red channel, and I'll plug that into one minus and take a look at what we get. We get some dark air, dark hening, and not, not super dark just yet, but darker areas for our rocks, and then bright white for our crevices. It's a good start, but we need more contrast. And what did we say earlier about contrast? Use a power node. Now, we've already got one in the screen, and it's already connected to a constant. How useful. Let's take our power, and we'll hold down Control and select our uh, constant. Hit Control-C, Control-V, and then just drag the network up here. Okay. Now let's take our one minus. We'll start organizing things a little bit to make it look a little nicer. And then we'll just drag this into the base. And we start to get a much more contrasted version, but it's still not contrasted enough. So we can take the value of this constant and really start to push it up. Like, let's say 5. Ooh, getting better, but not quite there. 15. Even better, but still not quite where I want it. Let's say all the way up to, oh, I don't know, maybe 25. All right, that's getting there, but I reserve the right to change that later, <laughs> uh, just because we won't really know until we plug this into our glow value. Sure. Now, to this, we need to add in some sort of a color. We need, we need a color to apply. So to bring in a color, I'm going to use a multiply node, again, because that allows us a way to apply color to white areas and to leave black areas black. 
where an add would just add the color everywhere. Multiply allows us to do that whole multiply by zero thing to keep things dark that are meant to be dark. So let's hold down the M key and left click to get a multiply node. And we're starting to run out of space between our network and our uh, material node. So what I'm going to do is back way out, hold down Control and Alt. I'm going to grab everything and push it all back. So it's just going to give me a little bit more room. You don't have to do this with every single thing. Like your normal network could stay a little closer, however you want to organize it, whatever works best for you. Okay, so we have our multiply node. Let's go ahead and plug our power into input B. It doesn't matter which one. I'm just going to use B so that whatever uh, else I use can come in from above. Let's take my little diagnostic guys and we'll pull them out of the way for now. Now, we need a color. And I told you it was, I'm not going to say a really bad habit. I'm not going to say it's the end of the world if you use a vector parameter. But I'm not going to use a vector parameter inside the network because uh, I want to keep the overhead down to a minimum. However, because I don't know uh, RGB colors off the top of my head, I'm going to bring one in just as a way to figure out what color I'm going to use. So I'll bring that in, just kind of pull it off to the side. Maybe we can put it over here next to our uh, little diagnostic network. These are all extra nodes that we're using to help us build the network. When we're done, we can kill them all out by clicking our Clean Unused Expressions button. Now let's bring in a vector 3, or a constant 3 vector. I always call it like a vector 3. I don't know why. It's just me. We'll plug this into input A, and currently this gives us a value of black because we're multiplying by 0. So let's start off by picking a color. We'll set, uh, use our color picker, and we'll say, what do, you, what do you think we should use? Some sort of orange? Yeah, orange, hot, glowing color. Uh, so we'll just begin with orange, and maybe I'll... No, I'll just use the base orange. Uh, I'm not going to get too picky. Now let's take a look at what RGB values that has. It's um, 1, and then 2 point stuff, and then 0 for blue. So let's just start simply. We'll jump over into our vector. I'll do this one at a time. We know that red was 1. We know that blue was 0. What was green? It was 2.1952. Thank you. Point, I don't know why. My brain just moved that decimal po uh, point over. It's kind of embarrassing. Uh, 0 0.21952. Point two one nine five two. So we should get the exact same value there. Excellent. And you can already see the result. We've got this uh, glowing orange crevices with black rocks. Cool. What happens if we plug this into emissive? Tink. Very nice. We're starting to glow, but it's kind of unimpressive. Yeah. It doesn't really feel like glowing. No, it just looks like it's unlit. Now, back the here... The back side yeah. looks cool. Yeah, anywhere we don't have light shining, it looks pretty good. But wherever the lights are shining, it looks kind of dull. So it'd be nice if we have a, another stage of control in here where we can start to brighten this up. To do that, all we need is another multiply node and a constant. So here's what I'm going to do. We're going to take our little diagnostic guy here. I'm going to assume we don't need him anymore for now. Okay. And we'll just put him to work. We'll just... Grab them both and drag them over here. And we'll move our multiply node like so. And I'll just plug multiply into B. So we're multiplying the whole thing by 1. And then let's just take that and connect that into emissive. And then we can systematically bring our value up until we like what we see. So let's take our constant value of 1. We'll set it up to 2. Ooh, getting better. Getting hotter. 3. Ooh, very hot. Even better. And you're even starting to get a little cracks and crevices of lava in between, which, you know, I kind of like, you may not want, but really, if you wanted to do a hardcore mask on your own, you would take this texture into a texture editing software, such as Photoshop, and you would actually create a version of this where the rocks were completely black. Because we're kind of trying to improvise it, you're going to end up with these little imperfections. Now, we can use those to our advantage. I mean, here it looks kind of cool, because lava would kind of be seeping down this crack. Uh, maybe out here it's, you know, not looking so good, but it's okay in general. Really, okay. Maybe it's a little bit much. I think it's really cool on the back. Let's go ahead and uh, set the description for something like glow intensity. Yeah, let's, let's get some of these descriptions in place. I'm going to have a couple of them. We're going to take this color swatch, and we're going to call this glow uh, color. And then we'll take this constant, and we'll name this glow intensity. Okay, so um, I think that takes care of that. Um, I w I'll go ahead and kill this guy for now. Let's just say we don't need him. If we need another one, we can bring it back. If you are unsatisfied with how much glow is taking place in your rocks, uh, come back to your power and start pushing that up a little higher. At some point, you're going to get diminishing returns out of this. You can't just keep cranking this up. But see, if we really push it up to 50, then you know we've really narrowed it down to inside the crevices, and the rocks are starting to really get now, excluded. Now push your glow intensity up. Can I kind of counteract that? So say to four. Ooh, yeah. That's really starting to come back. 
Oh, oh, turn it back around a little bit to your left. It's a nice a little bit more. A little yeah, bit let, more. let me go ahead and make our preview window it's nice a nice and big. little crack over there. Yeah, that's very cool looking. Oh, yeah. So that's starting to look really nice. Cool. So there's a, a quick look at creating a fairly simple network just to create glowing crevices. And let's just kind of overview or review mm-hmm. what we did. We took our red channel, which is a black and white version of our texture, minus the uh, minus any sort of other information that might be coming in from the red, and, or I'm sorry, from the blue or green channels. We inverted that, or technically we reversed that. We, uh, what you do is you take the number one and you subtract any other color values from it. It gives you uh, an inversion of what you had. So just think about it. If you've got the color white coming in, which is one, and you do one minus one, you're going to be left with a result of zero, which right. is the color black. But if you have the color black coming in, which is zero, one minus zero is going to give you a one, so you've now inverted black to become white. Oh, and let's push that to another level. If I had a, a shade of gray that had a value of 0. 0.6, there you go. and I subtract that from one, I get a value of 0. 0.4. So it's the other side. It's you're just flipping it around. That's right. That gave us a dark version that had white crevices, mm-hmm. so dark rocks, white crevices, but it wasn't enough. We needed more contrast. Remember, for contrast, just reach the power node. So we brought in a power node and cranked that way up to an exponential value of 50, multiplied that by a glow color, multiplied that by a glow intensity, and plugged that into emissive and we're done. Very cool. So really nothing to it. Let's go ahead and apply this. And uh, Actually, you know what? I'm going to get the window out of the way because I want to watch it come on. <laughs> so let's pop over here. We'll close this for now, though I will be reopening and saving. I'll scoot that over as much as I can. Let's get right down here on the surface and I'll click apply. And... Bink, everything starts to glow. Very cool. So now as we move around, now you, you'll see a little bit of banding. This is because of how thin those crevices are getting. Right. So before we completely run away, this might not be a bad idea to talk about tiling. There's a couple of ways to handle tiling. If you know for certain, without a shadow of a doubt, that you want your tiling to be bigger inside your material, you already know how to do it. Use a texture coordinate. Just remember that in, in this case, you'd want to make sure you did it to your texture sample and anybody else who is textured the same way. So your uh, texture sample for your uh, normal map would also need to be tiled to the same value. In general, you could use the same node. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not going to do that because I like the amount of tiling we're getting here in our preview window. And because this is BSP, it's very easy for us to select the BSP surface, press F5 to open our surface properties, and then we have some scaling we can apply. So let's maybe scale this up by a factor of four. So notice under simple scaling, just use the drop down, choose four, and click apply, and boom. Oh, wait, maybe it's a little bit too big. (laughs) Just say to two, and that's starting to get there. Yeah, that's better. That's a lot better. So let's just use that. We'll... uh, Close this window, click on the floor again to deselect it, and now you really kind of start to get a feel for the the rocks and the, the crevices of lava in between them. But I think that's going to do it. Okay, let's go ahead and save that package real quick. Just right. making a habit of yeah, absolutely. getting that done each Again, time. remember that asterisk. Whenever you see that, make sure you jump in and save your package. And really with that, that's everything I wanted to show in this video, so that is going to wrap things up. Thanks a lot.